Candlebox have come to the forefront of the modern rock scene with their drive, energy, and attitude. With the song, You, they capture all of these elements and then some. In a second, I'm going to show you how to play it. But first, let's tune up. Okay, now this is a song that's specifically arranged to build up and get bigger and bigger and bigger as it progresses. Now, seeing as we're trying to structure these tunes so that you can pull them off without 48 tracks of drums and bass and electric guitars, I've picked out what I consider to be the dominant guitar parts and sort of melted them down into one part so that someone, and hopefully that's you, can play the song. Now, if you grow another set of arms, or if you have a friend who jams with you, it might be cool to get out the CD and work out all the different parts and play them together. This would be a great way to help you develop your ears. But for now, this is how we're going to do it. So here we go. First, the intro is based on some individual notes kind of going back and forth between each other. The two notes are a B and an A. Let me show you. First, look at the B. It's on the third string. Fourth fret. One, two, three, four, and on your third string. That's your B, and the A is just two frets down, same string. Okay, here's the B, and here's the A. Now I'm gonna play the play the phrase for plays the bit the bees. I'm gonna play the phrase for you. Once I work on my English, I'll be a much better teacher. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of a right hand mute. First, let's concentrate on what the left hand is doing, and then we'll work on the rhythm. Okay? It goes something like this. See what I'm doing? Now let's look at how I'm getting this sound, which is greatly affected by what I'm doing with my right hand. The rhythm is... Because I'm muting with my palm, my right hand, right around the bridge, as opposed to sounding like this, it sounds like this. It's the same pattern. All I'm doing is muting. How am I muting? Just rest the palm of your hand right by the bridge kind of rest it there, and then tilt your hand forward. Resting it, tilt it forward. Okay, two notes, back and forth. Take your time with it. If I've gone a little fast, just rewind and go over the tape. It'll come to you in a little bit, okay? Now, once the singing starts, this pattern will continue. So, not only have we gotten the intro, but we've got basically the main part of the verse. When the vocals come in, this part continues. Halfway through, you're going to add a C sharp and a D. That's your C sharp. And that's your D. I'm playing the C sharp with my first finger, second fret, second string. And the D, I'm using my second finger, which is free right now, and putting on the second string, third fret. One above. Can you do that with me? C sharp, D. Now let's work it together where we do the main part of the phrase, and then from the halfway part on, in the middle of the verse, the C sharp and the D will come in. Here we go. One more time. Now it's a part of the phrase. Okay, so in other words, Half the phrase does not have the C sharp and the D, and the second half, it comes in. 
Now, if you're familiar with the song, if you have the CD, you'll play right along with it, and this will all make sense to you. Obviously, I haven't got a full band behind me, so it might be a little tricky for you to catch. Okay? So, that being the case, let's move on. Okay, now, before we get into the chorus, there's a chord that leads us into there, and it's the first power chord of the song, and it's a B. Let me show you how I like to play it. You're going to use your first finger, put it on the second fret, fifth string. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. That's your B. Now you're going to take your third finger, which is free, and put it right here at the F sharp, or, if it makes it a little easier, fourth fret, fourth string. The last finger we're going to use to round out the chord, because we're using power chords, we're not going to fully void out the full B, okay? We're just using the dominant part of the chord that establishes it, which is what they're playing. They're not playing all six strings. You just kind of hit the, the bottom three, which give it that chunk, and establish the chord in and of itself. So, you will put your pinky, or unless you're barring, it's up to you. You will also cover the fourth fret of the third string which is, you guessed it, it's a B. Just makes it sound a little fuller, okay? So you're basically playing B, F sharp, and B. Let me take you from the verse that we were at into this B so you see the transition, okay? Coming up. one hit. Then we're going to do the same type of fingering for the next three chords which make up the chorus. On, on the G, third fret, sixth string, third finger, and if you want to, just to fill it up a little bit, pinky on the octave. It looks like I'm playing a G minor, and the truth is, I, I kind of am, because I am not going to hit any string um, below the fourth. I'm only going to hit the sixth, fifth, and fourth string. These are power chords. So we're doing a G power chord. A. Notice again, I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. I'm not going... And I'm not going... I'm really just hitting the A and the E. And then again the B. So the chorus shapes up like this. At this point, the song repeats itself in its entirety. It starts all over again, going back to the initial figure. Vocals come in at the halfway point again. New part. At the end of the second chorus, you're going to hit the B power chord one more time, okay? Difference is, instead of going back into a verse, you're not going to do that. You're going to let it sustain out. 